Okay, we're going to look at limit sum today. Hopefully this, uh, in the video this way will work out pretty well. Um, so what we've done so far with limits, okay, is that we've said basically what the end behavior was. That we have this setup for limits where we have LIM, which stands for limit, of x approaches something of our function equals something, okay, and usually that equals a number or positive or negative infinity, okay, but this is the way you're supposed to set up writing it, is that you have the limit and then underneath that it's x approaches with an arrow, whatever your number is, then you write the function here, and this whole thing we're saying equals something. Okay, and so what we've done so far is like this over here. We've said what is happening with the end behavior. So if I have the limit as x approaches positive infinity of something like x squared, then what does that equal? Or if I have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x squared, what does that equal? Okay, so I have this graph drawn of what that looks like, that function x squared. And so here's what we're saying with the limit. The first one, we're saying as my x approaches positive infinity, which means if x is approaching positive infinity, that means that I'm going to the right on my graph, so I'm following along this line, and I'm going to say where my y values are going toward. Well, our y values are just going to continue to go up and up and up, which means the limit as x approaches positive infinity of x squared is positive infinity. Okay, then if I look at the limit as x goes towards negative infinity, as it go left and left and left and left, if I follow my graph, it's heading up towards infinity that direction as well. So the limit on this one equals positive infinity also. Okay, and so this is telling our end behavior of our graph, and we talked about like for a cubic function, you know, they wouldn't be the same because a cubic function would go up to the right and down to the left. Okay, so this was this is the way so far that we've really looked at limits. So now we're gonna look at limits a little bit differently and talk about limits as we're approaching a certain value. So this is kind of like what we have to do on number one on the homework and number four, where we have the limit. We're gonna end up with the limit of x approaches a number of a function, and that number is a number that doesn't actually work out very well. Like if I plug in 5 into this function, then I get 1 over 0, which is undefined. Okay, so that's the whole reason that we are looking at the limit as we go towards this, because if we could find a value, then that's all that we would want to do is just find the value. So what we care about then is figuring out as I get closer and closer and closer to phi, what is happening. Well, let's go ahead and make a graph of this. Okay, which you could do on your graphing calculator if you don't know what this looks like. Okay, I happen to know that this is a reciprocal function because we have 1 over something with x on the bottom. And on the bottom here, this x minus 5 is telling me to shift to the right 5. So reciprocal functions have vertical asymptotes and also horizontal asymptotes. My horizontal asymptote here, because I have 1 over x minus 5, would be at y equals 0. So it's the x-axis. So I have... If I think about some values, I can plug in, like, if I plug in x equals 6, 6 minus 5 is 1, 1 over 1 is 1. So that means my graph is up here, approaching my asymptotes. And if I plugged in 5, I'd get negative, excuse me, negative 1. So my other part of my graph is down here. Okay, so what matters on this is that as I get closer and closer to 5, okay, if I approach it from one direction I get something different than if I approach it from the other direction. So we do this 
new kind of notation that we haven't had before where we talk about what, which direction we're looking at the limit. So like, let's do the limit as x approaches 5 from the positive direction. From the positive direction means that from the right, I am approaching 3. And as I get closer and closer to 3, what's happening? Well, I'm approaching positive infinity. So to finish off writing this, the limit as x approaches 5 from the positive direction of 1 over x minus 5 would be positive infinity. Okay, and then if I do from the other direction, the limit as x approaches 5 from the negative direction of my function, okay, then I'm talking about from the left. If I approach from the left, which is the negative direction, where am I going? My graph is going down to negative infinity. So this equals negative infinity. Okay, so that's how we break that down. So the instructions on number one and number four look like this. It says find the domain of the function f, use limits to describe the behavior of f at values of x not in the domain. So the first thing you have to do, if we look at number two as an example, is figure out what the problem with the domain is here. Now, it's been a little bit since we've done this, but don't forget that that's actually really easy to find the domain of by saying, you know, x minus 1 equals 0 is where our problem is going to be. If I solve that, I get x equals 1. So my domain is from negative infinity to 1 and from 1 to positive infinity. Okay? So then it wants us to use limits to describe the behavior of f of values of x not in the domain. So the value not in our domain is 1. So what we're going to do is do the limit as x goes towards 1 from the positive direction. And also the limit, that's going to be too close. Also the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative direction okay, of our function. Okay, so we looked on this last one that we did at how to tell graphically, and that's one way of doing it, but let's say that we can't graph our equation, and there's another way, or if we just don't want to graph our equation, sometimes that might be the case, there's a way to numerically think about limits, okay, is that I can't plug in a 1 and get a value for my function, but what if I plug in something really, really, really close to 1 that's coming from the positive direction, okay, so, Let's do that. And we're going to basically set up a table of values in a way that I'm plugging in values of x and I'm looking at what my y values would be. Well, from the positive direction, 1.1 is close to 1 from the positive direction. So I would plug that in and I'd see what I get. Well, 1.1 minus 1 is 0.1 negative 3 over 0.1 is negative 30, I think. Okay, well, that doesn't really tell us a whole lot. Let's get closer to 1. 1.01 is closer to 1. If I plug that in, 1.01 minus 1 on the bottom is 0 0.01. Negative 3 divided by 0 0.01 should be negative 300. Okay, if I keep going, what I'm going to find is that the closer I get in my x values to 1, the larger my y values are getting, but they're all negative because the top of our fraction, we have a negative. So that means the limit, as I go towards 1 from the positive direction, is negative infinity. Okay, because the closer and closer I get to values that are 1, the bigger my number is, but it's negative. So it's negative infinity. That's numerically how I would figure that out. I can do the same thing with this one. But if I'm approaching from the negative direction, I would plug in numbers like 0.99 or 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 
And then I'd say, okay, if I plug in 0 0.9, 0 0.9 minus 1 is negative 0.1. And negative 3 over negative 0.1 gives me positive 30. And basically, if we keep up this trend, since we're getting the same values on the bottom, just negatives instead of positive, it's going to end up just giving me positive values of what I had for the other one. Okay, and so you should be able to see, hey, my numbers are getting bigger. The more and more numbers I put here, the more nine, the bigger this is going to get. It's positive and it's increasing in value, so I am approaching positive infinity. Equals positive infinity. Okay, so on a problem like one and four, and really just in general in this section where it asks us to talk about the limit as we approach a problem in our domain, this is what it's looking for is either to graphically look at it or to numerically look at it and say, okay, as I get closer and closer from the positive direction, what's happening? As we get closer and closer from the negative direction, what's happening?